Hey guys, I'm Matt, a developer from Ohio. And in this video, I'll walk you through the Build a Library project. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with classes, constructors, properties, and inheritance. Let's get started. In this project, we'll use JavaScript classes and subclasses to create a library catalog that handles three types of media, books, movies, and CDs. You can read the object specifications here. Before we finish the project, we'll make sure that each of these objects has every property, getter, and method that is described. The book, CD, and movie classes will all inherit from a parent class called media. You can think of this relationship as an is relationship, that is, a book is media. Therefore, everything that we define about media is going to be true for each of the three subclasses. We'll start things off by defining media as an empty class. So that's using the class keyword, and we can name that media. Inside the media class, we need a constructor. This is the method that will be called when we create a new instance of media, or any of its subclasses. The properties shared by the subclasses are title, is checked out, and ratings. Because is checked out and ratings have default values, only title needs to be a parameter of the constructor. So we'll write the word constructor as the name of this method, and we'll pass in title. This next part is something that I find is confusing for most beginners. So if you find yourself feeling stuck on the differences between parameters, properties, getters, and setters, just try to follow what I do and I'll recap everything at the end of task five. Like we needed in the previous task, we need to set the values for title, is checked out, and ratings. We'll save these to a specific instance of media by assigning them to the keyword this. We always prepend property names with underscores to differentiate them from getters and setters. So for example, we can write this dot underscore title equals title. That's saving this parameter title to this property title, which is assigned to a specific instance of media that we call this. We also need to set is checked out and ratings, but those have default values. So we're not going to set them to parameters. We're instead going to set them to whatever default value we want. So this dot is checked out, we're going to start as false. That means when a new object is created, it's going to have is checked out as false. Similarly, we'll start this dot ratings equal to an empty array. And later on, we're going to add things to this array using a method. Now we'll add the getters for each of our three properties. Remember that a getter is the publicly accessible version of a property. By using the underscores in the previous task, we indicated that the property should not be accessed directly. Instead, you should access the values via getters. So for title, we can write get title, and that's going to return this dot underscore title. So this getter title is going to return the property title, which is assigned to an object media that we call this. We also need getters for our other two properties. Those are exactly the same, so I've gone ahead and done that off camera. Along with getters, we need setters. While a getter returns the value of a property, a setter changes the value of a property. One great feature of this system is that we can omit getters and setters for properties that we don't want to be accessed or changed. For example, we're only going to write one setter because title and ratings don't ever need to be changed. So we'll write set is checked out, and that's going to take a value because we need to assign something to this, not just return it. And that's going to set this dot is checked out the property set to value. All right, let's recap on parameters, properties, getters, and setters. A parameter is a value passed into a method. For example, we pass title into the constructor. The parameter has a limited scope, meaning that it's only usable inside of this constructor method. A property belongs to a specific instance of the class. We can refer to a specific object by using the keyword this. So anything with this in front of it is a property. By saving the value of the parameter to a property, we're able to access it outside of this method. For example, we can refer to this.title in the first getter. We don't want our properties to be publicly accessible, meaning that we only want the specific instance of our class, otherwise known as this, to be able to access it. We can say that the properties have a protection of private instead of public. We use the underscore to indicate this protection level. It signals to other developers that they shouldn't be accessing it. So what if we do want to access the value of a property from outside of the class? That's what getters and setters are for. A getter returns the value and a setter changes the value. This has loads of advantages that I won't get into here. The one that you can see us taking advantage of is that you can omit getters and setters if you don't want anyone to access or change your properties. For example, we can say that title is publicly readable because it has a getter, but privately writable because it doesn't have a setter. Now that we have our properties, getters, and setters all done, we can move on to the methods for the parent class. The first is toggle checkout status, which will flip the value of is checked out. We can use the not operator to set this equal to the opposite of itself. So we can set toggle checkout 
status as a new method. And that's going to set this uh, is checked out. Note that this, is, this isn't with the underscore because we're using the getter for is checked out. And we're going to set that to not this dot is checked out. Again, we're using the setter here, not the actual property. There's almost never a reason to use raw properties outside of the constructor, getters, and setters. Our next method is get average rating, which will add up all the ratings, divide that by the total number of ratings, and return the average. First, we'll use the reduce function of JavaScript arrays to get the sum of the ratings. So that's going to be get average rating as a new method. And inside of that, we're going to set a new variable ratings sum equal to this dot ratings dot reduce. And what reduce is going to let us do is add up each value. So to reduce, we're going to pass an anonymous function. So that's going to have two parameters. The first is an accumulator, which is going to be the thing that we add up to at every step. So it starts at zero and every step along the way, we're going to add a new rating. And then we'll define the body of our arrow function to be accumulator plus rating. And so for each rating, we're going to add rating to the accumulator. So say we have the ratings like two, three, and four. The accumulator starts at zero and we add two to it, making the accumulator two. Now that the accumulator is two, we're gonna add three to it, making it five. And then we add four to it, making it nine. Now we can return rating sum divided by the length of the array, and that'll give us the average value. So we're going to return ratings sum divided by this dot ratings dot length, which is the number of ratings we have saved. The last method in our parent class will be add rating, which adds a number to the ratings array. We're using a method here instead of a setter because we aren't assigning a value to the ratings property. We're just changing the value that's already stored at ratings. If we were assigning a new value, that would be overwriting the entire array. So this new method is add rating, and that's going to take in a value, which is going to be the new rating that we add. And we're going to use this dot ratings dot push value. And this is going to push this value to be on the end of our existing ratings array. That's why we're not using a setter. We don't want to overwrite the whole array. We're just adding one new value to the end of it. Now that media is done, we can work on the three subclasses that will inherit from it. We'll start with book. The class definition is the same as any class, except that we'll use the extends keyword to make book a child of media. So that's going to be class book, and we'll add extends media. The first thing any class needs is a constructor. We need to include every property of book that the specification calls for, author, title, and pages as parameters of the constructor. So that's going to be constructor, and we'll pass in author, title, and the number of pages. A subclass constructor has one extra feature that our parent class doesn't have. By calling super, we'll set up the title, is checked out, and ratings properties based on what we already wrote in the constructor of media. Because media takes one parameter in its constructor, we need to pass that to super. So we'll pass super title, because remember, our constructor for media takes title. Now we can continue with the constructor as normal by assigning the values of author and pages to properties of the same name, except with underscores. So that'll be this dot underscore author equals author and this dot underscore pages equals pages. So we're saving these parameters to these properties. Author and pages will also need getters, just like in media. So that'll be something like get author, and then you can return this dot underscore author because we're returning the property author and not the parameter. And then you're gonna need to do the same thing for pages. So get pages, return this dot underscore pages. We won't be doing any setters or methods for this class, but I should note that all the getters, setters, and methods of media are inherited by book because we use the extends keyword in the class definition. Now we'll work on the movie class. I'm going to go through this one a bit faster because it follows the same structure as the last class. Like book, this class inherits from media, so it'll start with a definition that includes the extends keyword. So that'll be class movie extends media. And the constructor of movie will have the parameters director, title, and runtime, 
we'll pass title to super because that's the one parameter that media's constructor asks for and then save the other two values to properties so our constructor will take uh, director title and runtime then we'll pass title to super and save director and runtime as properties. Director and runtime need getters. This is the same format as every other getter we've done so far. So that'll be git director, and then you return a property, this dot underscore director. And then the same thing for runtime. So we're going to git runtime, return this dot underscore runtime. And that's movie completed. You'll be able to put these basic classes together more and more quickly as you see the structure repeated in your projects. Now that we have a few classes to work with, let's create an object. We can instantiate a new book with the new keyword, followed by the name of the class. We'll pass in the three parameters defined in the constructor of book, which are author, title, and pages. So we're going to save a new constant called history of everything, and that's going to be a new book. And the parameters here, we're going to pass in are provided, so we'll paste in the author, and then we'll paste in the title, and the number of pages is 544. We can use toggle checkout status on the book we just made, because book inherits from media, and toggle checkout status is a method of media. So we'll call history of everything dot toggle checkout status. But the print is checked out to the console to see the change. Note that we're going to access the getter, not the actual property, so leave off the underscore. So that'll be console.log to send a message to the console, and we're going to log history of everything dot is checked out. And if you save and run your code, you should see that true appears. And remember that that's always going to start at false. So the method definitely worked because it changed from false to true. We'll add three ratings by calling add rating three times. Again, this is a method that book inherited from media. So we'll call history of everything dot add rating. And we're going to add four as the first one. This is provided to us over here. We're going to add four as the first one, and then five as the second one, and five again as the third one. We can log the average rating by using the get average rating method that we created earlier. So we'll use console.log and we'll log history of everything dot get average rating. Now we'll do the same with a movie. It's important to test every class you make. So we're going to set this to a new constant called speed. And that's going to be a new movie. And again, we're going to paste in the parameters. So we're going to paste in director and then we'll paste in the title. And then we'll paste in runtime, which is 116 toggle the checkout status with the method inherited from media. So that'll be speed dot toggle checkout status. In log is checked out using the getter. So console dot log speed dot is checked out. I will add three ratings just like with the book. So speed dot add rating. We're going to add one and then we're going to add a second rating with one and then our third rating is going to have five. And finally, we'll log the average rating. So console.log speed.get average rating. We're done with the step-by-step -step tasks for this project, but it's great practice to challenge yourself by trying to expand upon the project. I'll give you some hints for each of the suggested expansions. To add more properties, you'll need to modify a class's constructor by adding a parameter. You'll need to decide which properties need getters and setters. That all depends on how the property will be used. To create a CD class, check the specification at the top of this project. You can follow the same process we did with book and movie. You'll get faster at making new classes every time you practice. In the add rating method, you can put limits on the submitted rating by using built-in JavaScript math functions. Look up how to use math.min and math.max. Shuffling an array is a pretty tough problem. A good starting point is the math.random function create a catalog class, you should make a new class that doesn't extend media. You'll need an add media method similar to the add rating method we already worked on. In this project, we created classes and subclasses to represent various kinds of media. We practiced the common pattern of JavaScript constructors and explored the differences between parameters, properties, getters, and setters. 
We also saw how useful inheritance can be by using inherited methods on two subclasses. Classes are integral to object-oriented programming, so it's important to become familiar with their patterns. I'm Matt from Codecademy. Happy coding!